Hey there, this is Alana with Jamie, and you are listening to the Praying Christian Women podcast. How's stuff going, Jamie? Pretty good. I would say this is like, it's been one of the harder days since all of this began, and it's not COVID specific. It's just kind of like one of those days where I have tried to get stuff done, and you mm-hmm. like, I feel like the entire morning I've gotten nothing done. I've been like yeah, puttering around from thing to thing and like intending to get things done. <laughs> I, I don't even know. I, it's like one of those running through quicksand days. So um, yeah. Yeah. And I think it was, um, I don't know. I feel like just kind of a heaviness and sort of a, a, I think the part that is maybe COVID specific is just kind of a helplessness. Like I know things are bad Mm -hmm. in certain places and I, I just don't really feel like, um, like I want to know specifics about what we're going through, what hospitals are really going through. And Mm -hmm. I just feel like on, on the news, there's a lot of politics. There's a lot of Right. You know, just stuff where I I don't feel like I'm able to really grasp what's out there and what's going on because I do mm-hmm. feel like I want to pray better and even mm-hmm. help if there's something that I can do or, you know, just stuff like that. So I think it's just one of those kind of murky days that I see mm-hmm. a variation of during general life, but because of this, it yeah. just has a different twist. It's heightened. Yeah. Well, I yeah. don't know where you are. We're kind of like drizzly, gloomy, haven't really been outside for a couple of days. Yeah. Um, so I get that, you know, those days about like going in quicksand, it's possible. Like I know sometimes for me, instead of just trying to plow through it, sometimes I just realize it's my body's way of telling me like, no, we're not functioning right now. (laughs) And you know what I mean? So like you could spend five hours trying to get things done or you could take a two hour break and a nap and, you know, an extra cup of coffee. And then maybe after that you'll be feeling better. But I know it, it is a weird, weird time. Yeah. Well, and my heart just goes out there, but there were some bad tornadoes. I want to say there were 20 or more deaths um, oh, wow. yesterday. And I've been trying to figure out exactly where they hit. I know it was kind of the South. Mm. Um, so yeah, we definitely should be praying for those people. I saw pictures and there's no way to social distance really when you're trying to pick up the pieces of someone's house and there are people that are now homeless. I mean, what are you going to do? This I is know. the second set of tornadoes since this mm-hmm. began. And I just, yeah, my heart goes out to those people. For sure. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a hard time. You know, there's absolutely no denying that. How's your family holding up? How was Easter? Easter was good. Um, I, I continue to enjoy church at home and I know, I know that God created us for community and, Mm -hmm. and the church is part of that. Um, but what we tend to do as a family is we go to church. My husband does sound. I help with children's ministry. The kids go to their thing. And then another busy day. Yeah. And then there's usually hockey or, you know, a, or we get home and just hang out. And so we really don't. We even go in separate cars many times because of mm-hmm. the different schedules with my husband right. going early. Right. So we don't just sit and talk about the sermon. We don't, you know, and I, mm-hmm. we, we do when we're intentional about it, but we haven't for years. I I don't think Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. I have enjoyed just sitting around and having, you know, like, yeah. Um, like I just realized this Easter after the sermon and our pastor is very academic, you know, he's, Mm -hmm. I love his sermons, but they're not really applicable for the little kids, but our oldest Uh sat in with us and, Mm -hmm. um, we resorted to having them watch the children's service during the sermon part after worship, Mm -hmm. but then everybody came back together. And I had just realized that, um, I hadn't checked in with my kids about their faith and their status for a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so like the five of us just had this discussion about, you know, you do know that your faith isn't just based on going to church, that it's, Mm-hmm. it's a, an individual relationship with Jesus. And I don't, I don't know that we would have had that conversation necessarily. That's cool. Yeah. So just things like that are good. Um, 
And it was mm-hmm. just kind of a, a laid back fun day. How about you guys? It was good. Yeah, we have a fun thing. We do um, like our own family version of the resurrection eggs. So we've got like about, yeah, we've got like about two dozen eggs and it's kind of a hodgepodge. Like some of them, they've got songs inside. Some of them have Bible passages and some have the actual pieces from the resurrection egg kit. So if you aren't familiar with that listening, it's like, you know, you pull out a little toy donkey. And so you talk about Palm Sunday or, um, I forget all that, you know, here's a coin to remind us that Judas betrayed Jesus. So basically the pieces tell you the whole Easter story. And so we had our oldest hide them and the younger two hunted for them. And then we just kind of went through and opened them up and went through the songs and the Bible passages. And that was really fun. And then we did church just via Facebook live, um, and I mean, it wasn't bad. It's it's not the same as going, but it's, you know, sure better than nothing. And one of the things that is fun about it is the dogs always snuggle with us on the couch. And that's pretty fun. <laughs> Aw, that is cool. You can't bring mm-hmm. your dog to real church. Usually. You can't bring your dog to real church. So this is a, <laughs> a little alternative. So no, it was a nice weekend. I think that, um, yeah, we're kind of maybe just getting into a little bit more of a groove than we were which is nice. I'm feeling like I've got a little bit more creative energy, work energy. So I don't know. I'd say that things are going pretty well here. Um, You know, Alaska hasn't thankfully been hit terribly. Like people are coming down with cases, but we're not seeing the like insane exponential growth that they're seeing in some of the major cities. So I'm really thankful for that. So I guess I'm maybe feeling more hopeful and grounded than I was like a couple of weeks ago. So that was, that's been pretty good. Yeah. Well, and the headlines are talking about how they might, the deaths are still kind of lagging behind all of the other stuff and mm-hmm. still continue to grow, mm-hmm. but the actual ho- new hospitalizations are mm-hmm. really going down in, in the big hard hit places, which is just yeah. great. I'm it's so great thankful. news. Yeah. yeah. So I have a just for fun quarantine edition question for us. All right. Yeah. All right. For the entire however long quarantine lasts, you only get one breakfast, one lunch, and one dinner. So basically you get to plan a menu, like a daily menu. That's all you get to eat. So every breakfast you eat the exact same Mm -hmm. thing. Every lunch, what would you pick? Okay. All right. So for breakfast, I would say maybe a variation on oatmeal because I like mm-hmm. I like oatmeal and you can put different stuff on it so if that's that true cheating like I like no, to put, I'll give you that yeah. yeah so oatmeal with like maybe fruit and what's your favorite oatmeal topping my favorite I have a combination that is like my go-to I like some form of nuts like walnuts or almonds mm-hmm. or pecans or something um frozen berry like the frozen berry mm-hmm. mix like they have at Costco mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, just a tiny bit of turmeric powder. Oh, I've yum. Overdone mm-hmm. it, but it gives it a really good yeah. flavor, just a little mm-hmm. bit. And then milk or almond milk on top of it. Yeah, that sounds good. And coconut yeah. flakes. And coconut sure. flakes. <laughs> and another, no, just kidding. So, I mean, that's <laughs> almost like granola, but it's it just is. like with baked oatmeal and with oatmeal. Or, you know, cooked, yeah, stove top. Stove cooked. What am I saying? Stove top oatmeal. <laughs> Stove top stuffing <laughs> for breakfast. <laughs> That's right. I do like, um, I like granola and I used to oh, make a really good, um, like homemade granola batch, but my blood sugar is just, it's not fabulous. So I'm like a couple years ago, I basically had to give up desserts. Like I'll still do it every so often, but it just, it stopped being worth it. Cause I would just get really jittery afterwards and then have mm. this crash. And I'm starting to notice that even non desserty foods, but just like high carby foods are starting to do that for me now. So like even an oatmeal breakfast, I always cook my oatmeal in milk and it make it kind of creamy, but even that it gets me just kind of, um, just jittery. Yeah. So, so what would you pick for your breakfast? I don't know. Like sometimes I've been even skipping breakfast just cause when I eat it, I don't feel great, but I think my go-to breakfast, um, when that's not a problem, I actually prefer leftovers for breakfast mm-hmm. just cause they tend to be higher protein than the typical mm-hmm. breakfast. You know what I mean? Um, so, but I guess that won't count. So, okay. So my breakfast would be an egg and an avocado 
and maybe like apple slices or something. Um, That's good. Kind of balanced. Yeah. That's a healthy yeah. breakfast. Yeah. And then lunch, my kids would get so sick of it. They already are sick of it. I, I'm a big fan of just soups. They're so easy. Like mm-hmm. I could make a soup and that could be our lunch for the whole week if the kids didn't hate it. <laughs> so I'd probably pick for lunch, maybe like a, I don't know, a black bean and ham soup with, um, you know, some veggies in it, just kind of a hearty, hearty soup. What I'm a soup. Do? I'm a soup fan too. I would say yeah. for lunch, I would pick like a, like a salad. And if it was Mm -hmm. something that I could have, my problem with salads is just the prep ahead of time because I like a lot of stuff in my salad and it just takes time to chop everything and get it ready. So I, I don't do a lot of salads unless I just pre-make it ahead of time. So Ah, probably mm -hmm. a nice salad, you know, like Mm -hmm. tomatoes, cucumbers, black beans, Mm -hmm. cheese. Yeah. And that sounds good. And what would your dinner be? Um, Oh man. So I love pasta and Mm -hmm. I definitely could eat spaghetti just about every night. I could eat Mm -hmm. pizza every night. Um, Soup or stew. I would really like like stew. How about this? A pot of stew with, I wouldn't eat the whole pot, a pot of stew (laughs) with like homemade bread, like really like green. Oh, that sounds good. Yeah. Bread Mm. and butter. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So I, I'm going to switch. I'm going to do, I'm going to copy you and do a salad for lunch. But like what you said, like not just here's some lettuce and dressing, you know, like yeah. a, a big full like salad. Variety and of then stuff. I would have, yeah, I'd have my dinner be the, the bean soup. That's yeah. probably how I'd do it. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, that's pretty well balanced and not it- <laughs> horrible for you. <laughs> Yeah. Now our real answers will be like in the after show. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Dunkin' Donuts for breakfast. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's interesting. Like I, I had a sweet tooth forever. And basically like when I had to give up desserts a couple of years ago, if you told me that I was going to do that, I would have been like, oh, I could never do that. But it got to where like, it just made me feel so yucky that it's not, like I said, it's not worth it. So it's even hard to say like, well, if I didn't have to um, you know, think about that side of it. What would I eat? Cause I'm like, I don't know. It's been so long since that kind of stuff hasn't made me feel kind of eh. Yeah. Well, and I think that's the whole, the whole point of, um, just eating healthy. Like when you start eating healthy, I think it changes the way you feel when you right, eat right. not healthy. So, mm-hmm. you know, that's a good thing. That's a good, good yeah. direction to be going in. I guess it, either that or God just knew that was the only way he could get me to give up desserts. <laughs> it's one or the other. <laughs> Tweak your blood sugar just enough. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Do we want to jump into a, how are we doing the um, Bible thingy? I know this is kind of an evolving process. Yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking, so our, our COVID devotional topic is um, prayer for vulnerable people. And the verse associated with that is 2 Corinthians 4.16. So I thought we could just read through 2 Corinthians 4. Um, and it's, let me see not the whole thing, but like the second paragraph on, and it's not all that long, but it's a great okay. re- relevant scripture in light of um, Passover and Easter okay. and all of that. So do you want me to I read it? I just pulled it up. Yeah. Do, so do you want to read are it? You at verse, are you starting at verse one? Um, did you say you're starting? I don't know, maybe like seven oh, or okay. you could do the whole thing, but maybe seven. Yeah. Do you want that to read sounds it? good. Sure. Okay. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power is from God and not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. Did you want to go farther? Yeah, I wanted to go to the whole thing because I love the end. Okay. All right. You want to do some? Sure. We'll do Uh, tag. Tag team. Yeah. Tag team. Uh, Verse 13. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. 
because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. All of this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. You want to finish up 16 to the end? Sure. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Yeah. So I just, I love that. Uh, the passage that was used in the devotional is just that therefore we do not lo lose heart though outwardly mm -hmm. we're wasting away inwardly we're being renewed day by day and it's with vulnerable people in mind that are already sick that have pre-existing right. conditions mm -hmm. um and even those that are already sick with with the virus um that there's just this hope that no matter what the condition is of our outside bodies that inwardly we can still be being renewed we can still be being built up and you know mm -hmm sometimes mm -hmm. more so than if we were physically totally with it. I know that's true of myself, that there are times when I'm physically weak and, and you have to rely internally. Yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I love the, um, the second part of that paragraph. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. And, you know, we talk a lot about praying with imagination. And I think that that's just such a neat um maybe exercise right now that we could do is like what is something really amazing that god might bring about from this so it doesn't mean it's going to happen but it can be very encouraging to just think through you know do you have anything off the top of your head like if, if you could just write the history for you and your family as a result of this what would it look like um i would say number one for my family that our kids would be confronted with a, a sense of urgency to grow in their relationship with God and that it would mm -hmm. just, you know, maybe give them a, I've already seen this in, in, especially in my oldest, just, um, he tends to be very pragmatic, very like have a, mm -hmm. a great sense of justice, but not really, um, a whole lot of mercy. Sometimes he can be very black mm -hmm. and white and kind of hard handed. Mm -hmm. And he's really been, um, I've seen a mercy and a compassion as he mm -hmm. started to think through how this might be affecting other people oh, um, wow. as he's felt blessed that he's doing okay, that our family is doing okay mm -hmm. right now. And so mm -hmm. I, I think that it's really, and, and also knowing some vulnerable people in our lives, right, right. I think it's made him think, wow, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, let's pray for that person or I feel bad for people that are going through this, this, or this. So mm -hmm. I don't know, just that God would use the negative reality to just instill like a, a renewed compassion and, and a faith, a greater faith. Mm -hmm. That's, that's vague. That's not really a no, that's, hard thing, but that's really cool. That's probably even more articulate, articulate than I could be. Um, you know, there's part of me that I still, re like there were some hardships about it, but there was some things about living in rural Alaska I really liked. And I almost feel like now that we've learned how to do a bunch of things via distance stuff, like maybe we could go back to that. Not that, you know, like I'm ready to pack a U-Haul, but I definitely, like I've enjoyed this time living in a slightly bigger area, but it also has made me kind of appreciate you know, like Alaska small town is like three or 400 people in it <laughs> kind of small town. And there's part of me that's like, you know what, we could go back to that there. You know, when we left, I was like, Oh, it's so nice to be in a big city again. Um, but honestly, I don't know. I, I feel like a lot of good things are already happening in that we're enjoying family time together. We just started going out on walks as a family, you know, so there's already like, to be totally honest, like, a lot of the things that I would hope to happen out of this kind of already are, which is cool. That is really um, cool. Yeah, but it's, it's, it actually makes it hard to like stretch my imagination to know what I would even want more of, you know? I mean, things are, things are going pretty well over here and the kids are handling things really well. It's not to say it hasn't been difficult, but I don't know, kind of like what you were saying with your family and church and things like that. Like some really neat things have already come of it. Yeah.
Mm -hmm. Um, I think another, I think some of the things that have already kind of happened that I could see continuing are more churches and groups have become more tech savvy and more internet Mm -hmm. focused. Mm -hmm. So I really think that people that before would never have been able to even go to church have way more options. For sure. Yeah. That That is after after Mm -hmm. we're able to congregate again, yeah, whatever that looks like, you know, that I think people are going to have more options for the gospel to go out digitally. I think it's pushed the gospel forward. Um, Yeah. I think what also would be kind of cool is if, you know, I, I don't know, I could see it going either way. Like when businesses open totally up again, I could see like everybody's first day back at the office looking exactly like it did before the pandemic. But I also like, it would be kind of cool if, and again, like you and I aren't working in offices. So this is kind of us just like watching from the outside. But, um, you know, like if Scott could work part of the days at home, should he choose to, because they realize that that's an okay thing to happen or, you know, maybe they don't need to do as many meetings as they have been because things work fine even without it. You know, I'm curious to see what this does for the work environment. And I'm sure that all of this is really good news for like the freelancers and, you know, people who are already working from home. I think we're going to see even more services designed to support people who do work from home. Mm -hmm. And I wouldn't be surprised if at least some industries become more open to different work arrangements, which could be cool. It could be having, you know, parents home more with their kids or things like that. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I've tried to think forward with just society and if society Mm -hmm. itself is going to bend or if things are going to eventually go back the way they were. But, you know, Mm -hmm. I've just tried to think forward. And I don't even know, like one of the things my husband was talking about was um, some of the stores that never had curbside delivery services before. Now they're doing that. And Mm -hmm. um, so are they, he went, he had to get something yesterday um, for a Mm -hmm. home repair and they, it was Lowe's or Home Depot. And so he said, Hey, I just, I got to drive up to the curb. They brought it to me. We didn't really have to, ex- we didn't have to exchange money. We didn't have to touch each mm-hmm. other. And right. Yeah. He said, I would like that forever <laughs> to be able to I know. always do that. But then you get into, okay, then are we going to become more distanced physically with people in a bad way because of things like that? I don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure. Yeah, no, it, it really is an interesting question. Yeah. I had an interesting talk with Scott the other night and a few other people. It was kind of in this Facebook thread and mm-hmm. I don't want to dive too deep into it, but you know, there are concerns about potential like government's abuse of power during this time. You know, we are giving up some freedoms, which I'm okay with at this point in time, you know, but some people are getting worried that maybe when, even when things can go back to normal, you know, like, I don't know. So there, I, it could go either way, kind of like you were saying, it could get so amazingly way better. It could get harder. I think we're going to see some pretty cool, um, kind of like what I was talking about with like support for people who work from home, mm-hmm. which is, you know, like good for people like you and me. I could also see an increase in like online homeschool opportunities. That's pretty cool. I think that really this is allowing people to see that a lot of businesses can switch to remote work without it being terrible. Mm -hmm. And I think that actually gives families and individuals a little more freedom. Kind of like what I was saying, you know, if like Scott's job with the foster system, like he does have to go and do home visits right now. It's all, you know, on zoom and things like that. But theoretically, at least as of right now, we could be living in Indonesia and he could be doing his job here, you know? So I I think it could potentially open up interesting options, even for like the business's missions model. 
um, you know, if you could do your job from anywhere, which now a lot more industries are realizing you can, or at least they're shifting to find ways so that you can, mm -hmm. I think that actually could have some pretty neat implications for the mission field. Um, you know, like when Scott and I got married, so that was 2004, and we were planning on moving to Siberia and becoming full-time missionaries, and it was so different even just, you know, what's that, 15, 16 years ago in that, like now, if we were facing that choice, it, would, it wouldn't be as scary because we could say, okay, well, I could still write my books. I could still have, you know, that source of income. We could still homeschool the kids basically the same way we're homeschooling them now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, so I could see this being kind of a neat thing for the missions movement also. It could. And just for families in general, I mean, I feel like yeah. our family... I think it's just been really good for our kids to see more of their dad and, you know, for know. us to, yeah, mm -hmm, I mean, mm -hmm. it's, it's nice. You know, I realize like, yeah, so Scott's going to work in the morning and coming home around lunchtime and then just staying home and doing some calls in the afternoon uh, for work. And I realized like he came home today and it was the first time I put it into words. Like this is the first time in, I believe our married life that he is home for more waking hours than he is at the office. Mm -hmm. And you know, that's, I mean, it, yeah, it comes with hardships for sure. Um, I don't, you know, once his office opens back up, I'm sure he's going to be glad to be able to go back to the, you know, more normal pace that he's used to, but still we recognize that this is a unique blessing for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. Could be neat also for like, um, women on maternity leave, you know, like, I feel like so many businesses are realizing, you know, what? a lot of this stuff people can do from home. And so that could be neat too, for working moms and working dads and new parents. I don't know. I think some really neat things could come out of this. Yeah, I think so too. You know, or we could all get desperate and the world could fall into anarchy. I mean, one of, one of the two. <laughs> Six of one, half dozen of the other. So I read this book. I think I mentioned it, but there was part of it that um, I don't think I told you. So just like send me a virtual slap if I'm repeating myself. But I <laughs> read a book a week or two ago. It was called Bored and Brilliant. And it's talking about just how for our health and creativity and relationships, it's really nice to unplug deliberately yeah. sometimes. And did I tell you about the scientific study they did with the um, electric shocks? I don't think so. Okay. No, I don't think so. So this is how much humans resist being bored, right? So they would get these volunteers to be in the study and presumably it's not cruel because I assume that there's all kinds of standards that you have to follow and that these are willing participants, but <laughs> the participants were given electric shocks, which were strong enough and like pain or I don't know if painful is the right word, but basically they were neg it was a negative enough experience that they were willing, the participants were willing to pay like $20 or $50. They were willing to pay a certain amount of money to not be shocked again. Wow. And that was sort of the, um, the baseline. Okay. And then what they did was they took those participants and kept them in a room with no windows, no sound, no phones, no stimulus, and just kept them there. And I'm not talking for like 20 hours. Like they just kept them there for maybe... I don't know, an hour, like it was not an insane amount of time. And the majority of them voluntarily, like there was a button that they could press to give themselves the same shock. And most of them chose to give themselves this shock in order basically to not be bored. You know, it was um, like being bored was worse of an experience for them than this electric jolt. So were they let out of the room after they shocked themselves? Is that? No, no. It was just a way to pass the time. It was like, <laughs> here, you're going to have to sit in this room. If you feel like it, here's a buzzer that's going to give you a shock. Yeah, no, it, it's not like it let them out or anything. It just, it was in their minds better than just sitting there doing nothing. Yeah. And I don't know if you've it's had this bizarre. thought. No, I hate even admitting this. There have been days where I have been like, I would so much rather be sick and just get that side of it over with than just be sitting here wondering what's going to happen. Like, have you ever felt that? I don't, 
it's not oh, a good yeah. thing and yeah, it's yeah. not a right mentality. But I've, I've thought that it was almost like, I'm so anxious and so stressed and so tired of being cooped up. Why don't you just let me fall ill so that we can get this done with? And again, I, I'm not actually saying that, but that's kind of the temptation in the back of my head. No, and it reminds I, me of that experiment. Yeah, no, I, and, but there's, instead of just boredom though, there's the added anxiety of just feeling like you're a sitting duck, just waiting for the yeah. virus to creep in your house <laughs> somehow, you know, and get mm -hmm. in through whatever your packages or, you know, and I know. obviously that's not the right mentality to have. And as believers, mm -hmm. we need to, you know, take control of the fear. But the reality is we have the fear. We have the anxiety. If we're honest with yeah. ourselves, I think most of us mm -hmm. are anxious about the, the possibility of getting it. And I even mm -hmm. vo vocalized or verbalized several times to my husband over the, over the weeks, just, I almost wish that we would just all get it and get better. And if I knew that uh -huh. we could all get it and get better, I would wish for that probably, you know, yeah. just if I knew that we would all be fine because and then, then you get, you get immune too, which is nice. So I, I listened to this podcast about the Spanish flu and I did not know anything about the Spanish flu until, um, you know, a month ago when people started mentioning it. But I guess there were two strains. And the first one was maybe about similar in severity to what we have going on now. Mm -hmm. But then like within a year, it had mutated and people would like fall ill in the morning and be dead by evening. Oh, And yeah, so I read about that. I'm kind of like, okay, well, if, and again, I don't, you know, there's no indication. There's no scientific reason to believe that the COVID virus is going to follow that same pattern. Right. <laughs> but again, it's kind of like, hey, well, you know, because the people who caught it the first time, where it was serious, but not nearly as serious as kind of the mutated version, they were immune still to the mutated version. So part of me is like, okay, but again, I don't really mean that. <laughs> no, and I don't know if they're totally sure even if you're completely immune, like, I, I don't know. I, right. I, they, they don't know. They yeah. don't know. But I do, I did look, so I told you, what, last week or a couple of weeks ago that I have this in my head that I'd like to give blood. And Right, right. What did you decide? Well, I decided I'm not going to push the issue at the mm -hmm. moment because I know, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to push the issue at the moment, but I have kind of had in the back of my mind, if this pops up again, maybe I'll have the conversation again. Um, okay. So I was reading an article, so it didn't directly pop up, but I was reading mm -hmm, an article mm -hmm. that made me think about it again. And so I just went to the, it was just saying things you can do for the mm -hmm. medical professionals. Mm -hmm. And one of the mm -hmm. things you can do for the hospitals is there are still, you know, cancer patients, patients that get right. in accidents, transfusion, mm -hmm. blood. Mm -hmm. So I clicked on the Red Cross website and they were talking about how they have this big thing that says, if you have had COVID-19 and you have recovered, you can potentially give plasma. Right. And your antibodies can be used to help COVID-19 patients. Mm -hmm. which I think is really interesting. So along the same lines of your thought about, you know, how we're talking about, oh, oh, right, we right. gonna, I was thinking, well, if I got it, I'm already like planning if I get it and I recover, like, okay, hey, you're going to donate. I could donate plasma. But now I don't, I don't know a ton. Is donating plasma just, is it the similar procedure as donating blood or is it more painful, invasive, or is it exactly the same? It's not the same as giving blood. From what I understand, um, it's more, it's not painful from what okay. I understand of it. So I, it's I, not I, like, what is it um, when you donate your, what's in, in your marrow. back? For, yeah, like, nope, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Not going to, don't think I would do that. Maybe no. for, for a relative. <laughs> That's yeah. about it. <laughs> well, the plasma, I think, if I'm not mistaken, I think you get hooked up to a machine that like strains out some of the plasma and keeps the red blood cells. I don't know for mm -hmm, sure though, mm -hmm. but it's takes longer. It's a different procedure, but I don't believe it's painful in any way. You just get the same needle and your blood just comes out. Okay. And so at least than, no more so than giving blood. Yeah. Right. And rather than just going into a bag, I think it goes through a, a filtration system okay. of some sort. Which I wonder that, how many listeners you just made really squeamish right now. <laughs> well, even me, I'm not a squeamish person, but even thinking mm -hmm. about like just the thought of my blood going somewhere and then them putting it back in me and mm -hmm. I don't know, it's kind of, mm -hmm. I don't know, like the, 
Um, it's basically what happens in dialysis, right? Right. I, I don't know, actually, but I'm guessing. Mm, yeah. Mm-hmm, but anyway, mm-hmm. all of that to anyway. say, <laughs> there, if I were, I have had the thought. Okay. That so if you catch I it and recover. Know, and I got mm-hmm. sick and then I recovered and I knew that, you know, and then the added thing with, if you knew that you were immune, you could go do all these things to, you know, help people. Right. But that doesn't mean that you can't bring it back to your family though, because you could still carry it. True. So. Right. That's a good point. Anyway, hmm. interesting stuff. Yeah. I guess. So let's, um, to wrap up our passage, verse 18 says, so we fix our eyes, not on what is seen, but on what is unseen since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. And I think that that's a great reminder because right now mm-hmm. all of this pandemic stuff is right in front of us. It is. And that's not, I mean, yes, it's real in terms of like this world's definition of real, but in, um, the eternal scale like this is it's so insignificant which is an interesting thing to remember you know yeah like if we could i mean i'm just thinking that you and i don't have the disease no one in our family does that Mm -hmm. we know of and Mm -hmm. yet there could be someone out there that is sick with it that has bad symptoms Mm. or knows someone that's in the hospital or on a ventilator Mm. or, you know, and I just think if we were, you know, if we were to be just a moment in eternity with God, Mm -hmm. realizing what that really is, I just believe that we would look back on this and just think, why were you afraid? What were you so afraid of, you know? And so I just think, transcending this earthly mindset just even for a second Mm -hmm. and just thinking yep you know god and what he has prepared for us is so much more glorious so much more real and Mm -hmm. so much more i mean eternity compared to a a flash in the pan is what it is yeah very much so so anyway i just i i feel like there really would be no fear if we could get that perspective. And sometimes I just wish that for a moment I could have that perspective just infused. I know. (laughs) Well, again, this is where you can use your imagination. Like sometimes I picture myself coming back. So like I'm five years older and 50 years wiser and we've all, again, this is kind of with the caveat of everything has turned out okay. All right. So let's work under that assumption. <laughs> Things have turned out okay. And I go back and talk to myself mm-hmm. today. I'm like, you know what? This is fine. Like I thought about that when Silas was in the NICU. Yeah. If I could go back now and talk to me then and be like, you know what? This is all going to work out just fine. Mm-hmm. What would I want to tell myself back then? And so I, I try now to put myself into the future me. And be like, what, what would I want to say to myself? I would want to tell myself, you know what? This is all going to be fine. God's going to work it out for good. This anxiety that you're feeling, it's normal, but it's not necessary. And you are free to let it all go. Like that's, that's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. I think so. And it just brings it all around to even if it doesn't all work out. Okay. Mm -hmm. There is this hope because of what Jesus did. Yeah. That it is still going to be okay. There's going to come a day. In the long term. Yeah. Even if it's not you older and wiser and healthier coming back and saying it's okay, it's going to be Jesus in heaven saying, you know what? It's all ended and your suffering's over and now you get eternity of joy. You know, I love how the Bible compares our trials to labor. You know, like yeah, there's no I really. Do I don't know of anybody who's gone through an easy labor. Some are harder than others. Some are shorter than others. But they're really like there isn't really an easy labor that I know of. <clears throat> but I also don't know of any mom who regrets going through labor so that her child could be born. Right. You know. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I, I feel like that's how it's going to be for us. Yeah, it might get hard for some of us. It's going to be harder than others. For some of us, it's going to be really, really, really hard. No matter what, though. 120 years from now, we're all going to be on the other side in heaven. And again, this is going to be like you said, that flash in the pan. Um, It's, yeah, it's not going to, it's not going to leave this sense of heaviness. It's not going to leave this anxiety. It's not going to, we're not going to have any fear. And that is nice to remind ourselves of. Yeah. 
Yay. All right. All righty. Want to just close with our prayer for vulnerable people and yes. sign off? Let's do it. That sounds great. Okay. Loving Father, we praise you for your omnipotence. You are the almighty God who has no rival, no equal. We confess that when we face our own human frailty or that of loved ones, we can be afraid. We forget who you are and the fact that we are your children whom you love, protect, and defend fiercely. We acknowledge your power now, Lord. We praise you for being stronger than COVID-19, stronger than our enemy Satan, who has forged this weapon against your precious creation. But what we know is this, no weapon formed against us will prosper. That which the enemy intended for evil, you redeem and repurpose for the good of those who love you, who are called according to your purpose. We claim all of this as our birthright through the blood of Jesus. And it's in his name that we pray for the vulnerable people in our families, communities, and across the globe. You revealed to Paul one of the greatest truths. Your power is made perfect in weakness. When we are weak, your power rises up and moves in ways we could never have asked or imagined. Pain and frailty thin the veil between flesh and spirit. It is when we come to the end of ourselves that we tap most fully into your strength and see you move mountains. We pray this strength and power over the most vulnerable people today, Lord. We ask that you would surround them with your peace and love, making them shine brightly against the dark backdrop of their physical struggles. We pray for those who are afraid that you would remove the spirit of fear and replace it at this very moment with a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. We pray for those who don't know you and feel like they're helpless, that you would send Christians to surround them, bombard them with scripture and gospel hope on social media through believing doctors or loved ones. We pray for salvations in the lives of those most susceptible to this virus, that you would call them to yourself in their time of greatest need and show yourself as Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals, the sustainer and upholder of life, their mighty shield and the lifter of heads, the source of peace and joy even in times of trouble. Protect these vulnerable people from COVID-19. Show us ways to support and encourage them in these difficult times. Give them a sense of purpose and hope. Shower them with your blessings and be glorified in their lives today. In Jesus' name, amen. So our praise point for today is God is omnip omnipotent. And some of the scriptures that we um, had that, talk about God, God's omnipotence is um, Job 37, 23, Psalm 33, 6, Jeremiah 32, 17. Awesome. Well, thank you, Jamie. Yeah. It was really fun and encouraging to meet with you. Yeah. And yeah, I think we're going to try to move toward like what, three-ish times a week. So maybe not every day. We, we weren't making it every day for the past couple of weeks anyway. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, no, it still is great to connect with you. It's great to connect with everyone listening and we will talk to you all soon. Alrighty. Bye.